Hi everyone, if it's not obvious from my uh, totally scientifically accurate costume I got on right now, today we're going to be talking about slugs. And not just any type of slugs, we're going to be specifically talking about nudibranchs, or sea slugs. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Welcome everyone! As you can see, I have shed my slug costume because slugs don't have arms and I need arms for today's video because not only are we going to be talking about nudibranchs or sea slugs, we're also going to be making our very own. So let me show you the materials we need to get started. So one of the most giant one I have here, our handy dandy bag of polyfill. I think this is like the fourth bag I've gone through on my channel alone already. Um, you will also need um, some different colors of felt, whatever colors you want. Nudibranchs come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Imagining right now that I'm in editing, I'm gonna put a bunch of pictures around me. All sorts of different shapes and sizes, so any color goes for making our very own nudibranch. In addition, we're gonna need even more colors, so I have some acrylic paint in whatever colors I wanted. I like the combination of blue and purple, so I want some blues. My paint palette and paintbrush, and anything else you would need associated with painting. Scissors to cut everything out. Some embroidery floss to sew it up. The nice thick thread. This makes for faster hand sewing. And needles for the thread. Very easy project. Uh, I once actually made like 20 of these for all of my class in college in a day, because that's what I do with my time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started by cutting out the body of my nudibranch. And they come in all shapes and sizes, so as long as you make something that is vaguely slug-shaped, you're winning. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and we're gonna need a top and a bottom piece to sandwich together. So I'm just gonna fold my felt over and create a sluggy shape the way I want it to be. So talking a little bit about nudibranchs, or nudibranchs, it is a Latin word that quite literally means um, naked gills, so nudie, naked bronch gills. And this has to do with the fact that their gills that they use to breathe are outside of their body. So there are kind of two main classes of nudibranchs. There are the dorits, which are smooth and just have a bunch of gills kind of sticking out of their butt area. It's pretty adorable. No, okay. Um, and then there is the Aeolids, which are covered with gills everywhere. They look like little, almost like pieces of grass. They just have gills coming off everywhere. I have cut out an acceptably sluggy shaped piece of fabric. I can toss this aside. And the very first thing I'm gonna do, this is different from like other craft projects, is I'm gonna start to stitch it up around the outside and then stuff, leaving a little gap to stuff it and then continue stitching up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and fast forward through that to make this video short and concise. And I will see you in a second. As you can see, I've sewed up all the way around my nudibranch body, added in a little bit of stuffing to give it some dimensionality, and then it was really easy to just stick my needle into the layers and hide that extra thread that was coming off or hide any knots. Now we have a blank nudibranch body ready to decorate. The first thing it needs is gills. That's the very meaning of nudibranch, as I just said a couple of seconds ago in video editing time. And the gills are how it breathes underwater. So I'm gonna make a mine, a dorid, that is ones that have their little gills on their little back end. So to do this, I'm just gonna cut out like a rectangle of some different felt color, and I'm going to snip it to give it, not all the way through, so there's still a connecting piece right here, but it's got like a little fringe. So I'm gonna make a little fringe. And until the length I want it to be. Turn it, oh, I put my needles away too soon. <laughs> Turn it into a little circle of gills and then stitch it onto the back end of my nudibranch. So let me stitch that on real quick. What I like to do to get the gills to stay is first roll them up with a ball and put a couple stitches to keep it in this ball shape and then attach it to the back end of my baby son nudibranch. So 
I like this project because I promise this is the only part of it that is sewing and the rest of it from here on in is just decorating it and making it as cute as you want it to be. So again, I can just punch my needle through it, pull a little bit tight to give me some tension, trim the thread, fluff it back out, and the thread disappears in the little bronc. And now he's got some giggles. And while we're at it, I forgot, we have to give him eyes as well. Technically speaking, Nudelbronks don't really have eyes the way we think they have eyes, but they do have what are called like eye spots. And these are little special like clusters of cells that do allow them to see slightly that are just clustered near where eyes are and they're really pigmented. So they look more like eyes, but they're not exactly eyes. So I'm just gonna use my Oh my gosh, blue embroidery floss again, because this is my nudibranch and I can do whatever the heck I want. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'm just gonna make two little French knots to make little like eye spots. There are, um, since we are gonna put paint on these, if you wanna use black paint or whatever color of paint to make eyes as well, you are welcome to do so. This is very much do whatever the heck you want because Nudibranx are kind of an animal that was like, ooh, I might just do that because I'm too lazy to do that. Anyhow, we're gonna paint these eyes on. So the next step we're gonna do is paint decorations on it. So I have two colors of paint here. You can use as many or as few as you want and whatever colors you want. And I'm just gonna decorate it with spots, polka dots, stripes, swirlies, whatever I'm feeling. Because again, Nudibranx come in all shapes and sizes. And I'm going to talk about the reason why that is. So Nudibranx are a type of gastropod. And if you remember in my show video, which again, if you haven't watched, you should go watch it. It's pretty fun. I went to the beach. I witnessed Shell's getting murdered. Great time. Uh, <laughs> shell, uh, shells. Ooh. Snails are gastropods. Nudibranx are gastropods. The big difference you might notice between like a snail and a slug is that a slug doesn't have any shell. They lost their shell somewhere along the way in the evolutionary track of animal history and they don't have one anymore, but it's okay, we still love them. One of the major points of having a shell for slugs is a, not slugs, snails, is as a defense mechanism against predators. So if you don't have a, sh oh my gosh, there are so many, snail, slug, shell. If you don't have a shell, you need to have some way to defend yourself. And one of the ways, there are many ways that Nudibranx disguise themselves, but one of the ways they disguise themselves is by being very brightly colored. So this bright coloration warns other animals that, hey, I'm toxic, stay away from me, even if they don't actually happen to be toxic. If you think about other toxic animals in the wild, you'll notice a lot of times they have very bright coloring. Uh, the one that most vividly comes to my mind is some poison dart frogs. They're usually at like aquariums or zoos and a little reptile house, and they're very brightly colored. And that's to warn other animals to stay away from them. And other animals know that these brightly colored frogs are very poisonous and will hurt them if they try to eat them. So other animals that may not be as poisonous also will use bright coloring in order to avoid getting eaten if they're not poisonous themselves. This is called aposematic coloring or aposematism. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right and I'm really bad at spelling it, but it's kind of the opposite of camouflage. Instead of camouflage, which Nudibranchs also do, means blending yourself in with the environment, aposematic coloring means being very bright, colorful, but they can get away with that because all of the animals know that being very bright and colorful means you're bad news. So Nudibranchs use aposematic coloring and also camouflage, depending on the Nudibranch, to ward off predators. They also have another really fun trait to them, which has made them make a lot of like science news. If anybody reads science news, I don't know how many people actually read science news that aren't scientists, but it's fun sometimes because they have been known to eat like jellyfish or sea anemones and take their stinging cells inside of them. So like a jellyfish or a sea anemone stings you because they have special stinging cells. So the nudibranchs can actually eat those things take the stinging cells and use them to become toxic to other things. So one of the most, in my personal opinion, really pretty 
Oh, he's so cute. Really pretty nudibranch is the blue dragon. Um, and that one actually eats Portuguese man o' war and takes their stinging cells, their venom cells, and that makes it quite poisonous to deal with because it's literally like a Portuguese man of war. That nudibranch is a little bit different because it will swim out in the open. Why am I swimming like this? Swim out in the open ocean. It's pelagic, just like our eagle spotted rays I talked about in my stingray video. But most other nudibranchs can be found in the tidal pool regions um, or like algae substrates or rocks and stuff like that. On my college internship I had a couple years ago off the coast of Washington state, one of the things we actually would collect all the time was nudibranchs, uh, specifically the like common name is like a leopard slug because it had little leopard spots on it and lemon slugs because they were yellow and they were very cute. These ones weren't quite as colorful as some of like the coral reef, more tropically ones. I also don't think they were poisonous or at least they didn't hurt us. I think they were going for the camouflage strategy. All right, let me add some, oh, I've kind of just smushed his eyes together. So I added some paint to his little gills and I added some spots and a little racing stripe. And I kind of want to add some other pieces and parts to his gills. This is really just fun because you can make as many of these in a bunch of different shapes, a bunch of different colors, and it's just a super fun, super quick project. Um, one last type of nudibranch that I think is really cool before I show you how cute this guy is too, is a type of nudibranch that will actually eat like algae or photosynthetic plants and take those chloroplasts from it and become photosynthetic itself. So it's one of the few cases of an animal actually being able to photosynthesize as well because it stole all of the chloroplast or what allows photosynthesis to happen in plants from other plants. So these nudibranchs are adorable, brightly colored, and also the little thieves of the ocean. Ta-da! My nudibranch is all finished and looking so cute. I love making these guys so much because there's literally an infinite amount of combinations you can make, different colors, different thread, different felt, different paint, different patterns, whatever you wanna do, and it's a super quick and easy project. And I hope you make your own at home too and enjoyed learning about a little bit more about sea slugs and nudibranchs in today's video. I'm gonna name this guy Emperor Hirohito, which leads me into our fun fact for the day, that Emperor Hirohito, the Emperor of Japan during World War II, was also a marine biologist who really liked to study nudibranchs. So we named him after Emperor Hirohito, the marine biologist, not the Emperor of Japan during World War II. If you are new to this channel, which thank you for watching and I hope you stick around and subscribe, we like to rate fun facts here, so please rate that fun fact I just said on a scale of one to 10 below in the comments. It's really interesting to see what you guys decide to rate different fun facts, and I'm always on the hunt for the best fun fun fact. Uh, please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you've already subscribed and are watching. Thank you so much, it means a lot to me. If you decide to make your own Nudabronk cutie buddy pal, uh, please tag me in it on Instagram. I would love to see them. I post on every Tuesday and Friday, and remember to always keep it sciencey. Come with us, and it should be super cute in our lives. Nope. So, some little bronx, so, some little bronx, so, some little bronx. Burrito wing, burrito wing. Okay. Hi everyone! <laughs>